You say you're Bahamian, right? Where would you identify with yourself on the sun? Because if I'm not mistaken, I believe Bahamians, you fall under West Indian. West Indian? Mm. Tribe of Benjamin. From the Tribe of Benjamin. Right. All praises. What's your name, bro? I had Native American in me too, though. So. Now, this is the thing. Get numbers 1 and 18. Because this is how we know who we are. Bring it up. According to the Bible. It's not based off your mother, it's based off your father. Right. The same way you see how these wicked nations, what they tell you. Um, the man determines the sex. That's what science tells you, right? Where do you think they got that from? Out the Bible. Right. And we're going to read that to you to prove that. Read that. Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. Uh -huh. And they assemble all the congregations together on the first day of the second month. So this is Moses and the children of Israel. They're assembling a congregation. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Joshua. They're assembling a congregation, right? That's right. And they right. declare their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. You hear that? They declare their pedigree. Just like we know uh, a pit bull. His pedigree, that's what he is. You understand his lineage. So they declare their lineage by the house of their fathers. Because the father is the one that has the seed. When you read about Leviticus 15 and 16, the father, the man, has the seed. We plant our seed into the women, it brings forth life. All the woman does is carry the baby. You understand that, bro? We, we determine the child. So you are of your father. So if your father is from so-called Bohemian or West Indian, you'd be from the tribe of Benjamin. If your father is so-called calling himself American black, you'd be from the tribe of Judah. You understand that, bro? So it's according to your father. So do you know where your, where your father's from? Yeah, that's where I get the Bohemian. That's where you get? Yeah, and Native American, my own grandfather. They say 50%. It might have been less than that. Yeah, but they, they, they call that mixture stuff. It ain't no mixture. A lot of, of so-called blacks, because you understand, especially in the islands, they call us West Indian. West is a direction. Indian is a derogatory from slave, meaning slave. So they was calling me Western slaves. Like my father, I'm, I'm born in Jamaica, right? I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. But they label us what? Western slaves. West Indian. Our people glorify that thing too. You understand that? Well, like we was teaching a brother earlier, it's important to know who you are. Because that right there is a lie. That, that right there was given to you during the time of slavery. When they came over and conquered us, that's the title they gave us. Right. So who are we before that? Bring it out. They're not telling you who you were before that. I who were you before that? I tribe of Benjamin. Tribe of Benjamin, all praises, bro. Right. That's so right. you know you're Israelite according to the Bible. Right. You know how to prove you're Israelite? No? Get that for the brother. Because this is what we are here to do to edify people and show them. So that way nobody can't come up to you and come up nonsense. Nah, bro, they, they, they lied to you. Look, let me, show you some, let me show you some science. Nah. Our people run to Ancestry.com. And that's how they're deceiving our people. You right. three-fifths of this, you three-fifths of that. No, you're not no mix nothing. You're up to seed because, brother, understand something. If we take an orange seed, right, and plant it in America, and I take an orange seed and plant it in um, Jamaica, for example, what's going to grow? Uh, no matter where the orange going to grow, right? So you're not mixed. No matter where you plant that seed, you're off your father. That's what's going to bring forth. Right. You're an Israelite. But we're going to show you how to prove you're Israelite. Because we don't come up with this off our own understanding. We read the scriptures. You understand that, bro? So we're going to read the curses. Because you familiar with the Bible? Yeah. Yeah? So, okay. So you remember when the children of Israel, uh, we came out of Egypt, out of bondage? Uh, Moses exactly. Remember when Moses gave us a warning? 
Well, that, that's what we're going to read for you. Get that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wert not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So Moses, a black man, gave children of Israel a warning. Hey, if you don't observe to do, not just read, not just study, but actually do the commandments of God, if you don't do them, all these curses are going to come upon you. Now I'm going to ask you a question, bro. Is curse a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing. It's a bad thing, right? You put a curse upon someone, a curse is upon you. Exactly. I that from David. I love David and Solomon's story. That's when I read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. All praises, all praises. But this is how you're going to prove who you are. Because it said these curses are going to come upon you. So we're going to find out what purpose do these curses serve. Because sometimes our people be like, it's a good thing or a bad thing. It, it does serve its purpose. Because yeah, it was bad that we went into slavery. But watch this. Read verse 46. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So it says the day. The day is talking about is the curses. When you read in verse 45, it said, moreover, all these curses are going to follow you and pursue you. So the days these curses were going to be upon you for a sign. Now, bro, what does a sign do? It shows you like a vision, right? It shows you something, right? Like your driver's license, identify who you are, right? So this sign was going to identify that these so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, that you are the children of Israel. That's right. You understand that? The signs, the curses are signs to identify who you are. Right. Because most High God knew in these last days we wouldn't know who we are. So the curses show who you are. That's right. Read on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign uh -huh. and for a wonder. And for a wonder. Because a lot of us sometimes we be wondering like, damn, why we be getting the bottom end of the stick? Why is it that, you know what, I work a nine to five, I do all the right things, I pay my taxes. Why all these things happen to us, for real? Read on. And upon thy seed forever. You see? Upon thy seed forever. Meaning what? That's a generational curse. Right. Meaning from the time of Moses to this very day, bro, we're still under these curses. But the curses is a sign to identify who you are. So we're going to read one of the curses. Get verse 68, let me get straight to the point. We're going to read one of the curses because we know slavery happened, right? Did you know it was documented in the Bible how it's going to happen? Because I'm going to ask you a question. Slavery happened. How did they transport us? By boat. By boat, right? Yeah. Watch this. Get verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. How did we get transported? Boat, On boats and ships. You know what the word Egypt means? It means bondage. Get that for the brother. Because we... You're not going to get my own understanding. We're going to read from Thus Saith the Lord. No, I love learning because I like All praise to the Most High. I'm trying to learn Hebrew. Right? I mean, you can learn the Hebrew, but... but I'm just saying, that's just... Yeah, there's yeah, nothing wrong with that. Because like a lot of our brothers, um, we, tell, we try to learn like other languages to go reach our people. Like he's from the tribe of Levi. You know what I'm saying? They would call him so-called Haitian. So he sometimes might teach me the Creole. I might run across the Levi brother. You understand? I could kind of teach him. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm going to just keep it real with you because... A lot of our people, they believe by learning the Hebrew language, that's what's going to save us. That's not what's going to save us. Right. I, I personally just want to learn it because one of my favorite scriptures is Psalm 19. And they were doing the alphabet. And them okay, and okay, I understand that. Playing, so I understand that. You just want to learn that for your own benefit. I get that. 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 Oh, praise. Oh, praise. I like to call him Eli. I like to get closer to the native tongue. Probably. Well, oh, praise to the Most High because my name is Yahaziel. Now, I'm saying that because my name is what? An English translation of the Hebrew. You understand? My name means God sees. So that's what we're trying to show our people. If you know who you are, you shouldn't want to keep that byword on you. Because that byword, like my last name used to be Hall. I changed my name legally. Why? I got tired of seeing that because I'm no longer property of Hall. Right. That was the slave master that had my lineage. I wanted to, mine. I wanted to put an X I don't know what my name is. God calls you Israel according to the Bible. That's your surname. That's right. We're going to get that for you. Um, read, read. I want to show you what bondage means. All right? Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Bring it up. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Most High God calls Egypt bondage, because like you know the history. When we was in Egypt, what happened? We was under bondage. Right. We was in slavery. Right. So now when you go back to verse 68, it said, The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, into bondage. Read that. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He's going to bring you back into bondage again, this captivity, but this time with ships. Because you know the history, we walked out of Egypt. Why would we need a boat to go back into Egypt? It's not, it's talking about spiritual Egypt that we're living in right now. That's why you see the so-called white man, his money, what does he put in the back of it? That all-seeing eye in the pyramid. You in mental, you in spiritual Egypt again. We in mental captivity, for real. 
Hey, there you, we in slavery again, bro. And our people, they don't want to believe that thing. They're comfortable with oppression. Hold on. By the way, well, all I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So Moses told him, the same way I'm telling you it's going to happen, is the same way it's going to happen, and history proves that to be true. Read on. And there you shall be sold. So there, wherever you got dropped off, because our people, you know what, the only thing that differs from us? Some got dropped off in Jamaica. Some got dropped off in Haiti. Some got dropped off in Puerto Rico. Some got dropped off in America. That's the only difference where you got dropped off at or who got dropped off first. Right. But it says, and there, wherever you got scattered, because we scattered through the whole four corners of the earth. And there, you was going to be what? You shall be sold unto your enemy. It says you shall be sold unto your enemies. Who sold us in slavery? What did the Bible just call him? You see that, bro? So we have enemies. Anybody outside the nation of Israel is your enemy. Because when you read the history like you're doing right now, you realize all those other nations, they don't like us. To this very day, they don't like us. Right. History proves this thing to be true. They don't like us, bro. They're not teaching you who you are. Well, I, I don't um, I, I consider them oppressive, but not every white man. At but, this week. Now, the Bible... I, say, I believe God believes in love, too, because he... Because, you know, he's spread love. So I believe at one point, it's going to be a point he created every color. So we, I believe we do be. Uh, we, no, I'm, I'm a black pride now, but I do believe it's going to be a time where we, we all going to need each other. You got it. But I do, I do believe, I see you, as in, because there's still a KKK. There's still people that's trying to now this is, get us. Now, that's the thing, because, and then get love for the brother afterwards. Because it's the thing. Our people, like, they say that a lot, oh, not every man, white man. Okay, so watch this then. If not every white man is that way, right? Why don't they give back this land that they stole? Bring Where's the good ones? Why don't they come forth and say, hey, Native Americans, we stole this. Why are they about to celebrate Thanksgiving? Right. You know what's crazy? That's right. You go celebrate 9-11 and see what they do to you. Oh, I know. You go celebrate a day when their nation got hit with some bombs and see what they do to you. But they're about to celebrate the mass murder of our people. Right. We are about to celebrate the mass murder of our people. Right. All praises to the Most High, bro. So if there's so if there's a good one, why do they not return what was stolen? Right. Why are they telling us you need to get out of here, go back to Africa? This ain't your land. Exactly. Why are they doing it to the Native Americans with that pipeline? So they gave them a reservation and said, hey, you can live there. And now what they did, they took it back away from them. So if they're evil, where's the good in them? That's why the Bible call them their enemies, bro. The Bible says, trust not your enemy, because just like I invested, so will they. Right. Some of them will come with a smooth word. It tells you that in Psalms 15 and 5. Some of them come with a smooth word. Yeah, you know what? I, we didn't mean to do that. That was my forefathers. Okay, where's your good works? Look at that. Read that. Psalms 83. Psalm 83, verse 1. Uh -huh. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies... Make it tumult. So the Bible says, thy enemies make a tumult. Tumult meaning they made agreement. They came together and made a, a, a wicked agreement. And we're going to read what that agreement is. Read. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. And they that hate thee, because they don't, they hate the most high God. Because God is only for the children of Israel. Right. You're going to read about that in the scripture over and over again. He said, I'm the God of Israel and none else. He only gave the laws to Israel. He never dealt so with any other nation. We got yeah. the one true God. Read that again. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. So your enemies made a, a tumult, a wicked agreement. Read. And they that hate thee have lifted up their hand. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. It says they have taken crafty counsel. Crafty counsel. I'm gonna give you, hold on. I'm gonna let you talk. Crafty counsel, for example. If they know who you are, why they don't teach you who you are? Why are you calling me African-American? Why are you calling me so-called Haitian? If you know who I am and you care so much about my oppression, why don't you give back the things that were stolen? Right. They have taken crafty counsel. Bring it in. Crafty counsel meaning they found ways to trick you into believing they like you. Right. Trick you into believing that it's not all of us, it's just them over there. We like you. Okay, so give back this land. Right. But I would have to say though, um, and I was going to talk about when, when they was writing songs, that's when he was running from Saul. So I, so I don't think he would necessarily, what, what he do when he do talk about songs, he do talk. Okay, bro, watch this. You know what you just said? I don't know, one thing I wanted to say, um, everybody needs to get, um. This is the thing, bro, you just said it best. David was running from oppression, right? He's running from Saul, right? Yeah. So read the tumult part, and we're going to find out who he was talking about, if he was talking about Saul. Read, read it. it. 
uh, verse 2. Yeah. For lo, Bruh. thine enemies make a tumult. Uh -huh. They that hate thee have lifted up their head. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people uh -huh. and consulted together against thy hating ones. Uh -huh. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So it said, they, they have said, they. He ain't talking about Saul right here. He said, they have said, let's cut them off from being a nation. Read. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel, that you won't remember who you are. Now let's find out who's the they. Bring it out. Verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom. The tabernacles of who? The tabernacle of Edom. Read it out. And the Ishmaelites. Read. Of Moab. Read. And the Hagarines. Read. Gabal. Read. Ammon. Read. Amalek. Read. Philistine. Read. With the inhabitants of Tyre. Read. Ashur Read. also is joined with them. They have har they have harping the children of, of Lot, Selah. The tabernacles of Edom, and he started naming other nations. You know who the tabernacles of Edom are? And that's the thing. That's why we come out here to show our people. That's Edom right. is Esau, the so-called white man. He's in the Bible. That's God right. calls him Edom. Bring his name out. is Esau, meaning wasted away because he has no pig pigmentation in his flesh. Right. When you go back to Genesis 25 and 25, that is the birth of the so-called white man, Esau. Right. When she had the get that for the brother. Bring it we out. are here to prove all things. So David just said, all those nations have cut you off from remembering who you are. Right. And you just said out your own mouth that it's not all of them. And the Bible just said what? It's all of them. Right. Ishmael is the so-called Arabs today. All of them are in the same agreement. All of them keep us on the bottom society. That's all right. of them took part in keeping us in slavery. All of them, that's like them saying like all black people are, um, are criminals. That, I can't, I can't. But that's the thing. We're not black. Right. We're not black. Because you got a lot, for example, the Arab man is dark-skinned. Why he don't call himself black? Right. Ishmael is dark-skinned. Why he don't call himself black? It's in the, you understand? Because he knows who he he knows who he is. He ain't. But he's gonna tell you, I'm not black. Right. He's gonna tell you, no, I'm Arab. Arab people are not black. The, bro, we call ourselves black. Right. They don't call themselves black. What I'm trying to show you is you are not black. Not black. Yeah, you an Israelite. That's they right. know they're not Israel. You understand that? Yeah. I, that they I'm know who they are, bro. Right. That's why they don't identify themselves like that. Because they know that's a derogatory name. Right. They never. You're well, never I gonna see them. Like black in the dictionary, how they depict it. Like. Exactly. That's why the so-called white, white man call himself white. Is he the color of white? No, Bring it nah. up. Nah. We're gonna read his description. Read that. Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. Bring it up. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. So this is what Isaac and Rebecca, she was, she had like twins in her side of her womb. So she was having a rough pregnancy, right? And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? So she's saying to the Most High God, yo, if this is ordained of God, why am I having this rough pregnancy, right? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Most High God told her, two nations are in thy womb, womb right? Read. Bring it out. And two manner of people. Two manner. Tell you what. Two different type of people is inside your belly right now, sis. Read. Shall be separated from thy bowels. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. Read. And the elder shall serve the younger. So he told them, the elder, meaning the first one that come out, is supposed to serve the younger one. Read. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, Behold, there were twins in her womb, uh -huh. and the first came out red. The first came out what? Red, all over, like in hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. That is the birth of the so-called white man. The first one came out red all over. Because down south, what did they call them? You understand that, bro? There's no, they don't have no pigmentation. You see the blood flow in them. This is the birth of the so-called white man. Because, for example, we today, we tend to have babies like this, we call them what? Albino. You'll never see the so-called white man have a black baby. But we can produce something like that. Right. You understand that? Bring it up. So this is a black sister, two black people. Exactly, bro. This is the birth of the white man. Call his name Esau. I pulled that to prove a point. Esau is Edom. You understand that? So when we go back to the crafty council, who's the first nation who did crafty council against us? My, oh, you got it. Re yeah, read it. Genesis, chapter 36, verse 1. Bring it out. Now these are the generation of Esau, who is Edom. Esau is Edom. Edom is a nation of people. Right. So when you say Edom, you're talking plural. You're not just talking about one. Esau right. is one person. 
That's where the so-called white man comes from. That's where his nation of people come from. The so-called Europeans, that's where they come from. Right. They're not the color white. They're in the Bible. The Bible calls them red. And you know the trick that they played on us? They call the Native American red. And he ain't red. He dark skin like me and you. Right. They're the red people. I mean, I'm talking about. I know, I know what you're getting at. Yeah, I know what you're getting at. They try to call them red, but when you look at the history, they call them colored, just like they call us colored. Right. The so called white man, he is the red man the Bible's speaking of. That's right. I don't want to be rude. I was going to give you something to eat. You know, like, I'm going to go do my research and stuff. Because I Malachi 1 4. Malachi 1 4. Yeah, get that. I just want to get you one more scripture. Because I understand you got to go, bro. And we got a website on the back of that flyer. Because we teach the truth for free, brother. Because that's the thing. Remember Christ said, you shall know the truth, and the truth is going to make you free. Right. Once you find out who you are, bro, this Bible starts to unlock itself. Right. But you got to do the commandments. You got to learn them and do them. That's why we went into slavery. Remember, Moses gave us a warning. If you didn't do them, we went on slavery and slave ships. Right. So now what we got to do to come out of this captivity, we got to do it. We got to start applying them. We got to keep the Sabbath day. That's we right. got to read how to keep it. Right. Right. Don't eat no pork, lobster, shrimp. Right. God said that's an abomination. That's he said right. you're the temple of God. Right. Why would you defile yourself? But, bro, I didn't know that neither. Like, a lot of us don't know that. You understand what I'm saying that? Oh, praise to the Most High. He's working with you because you're reading your history right now. Right. You're reading about King David and King Solomon. Oh, yeah. And you're going to read Solomon said, I'm what? I'm black and calmly. I know. I know. They try to say that. I know, every, I know they all black. And these are the people, our enemies, that cut us off from showing us who we are. They put us in bondage. Right. And th and this is this is God pouring out his spirit right now, showing you in the last days who you are so you can repent and come back and keep his laws. Right. But I'm gonna give you another characteristics of the so-called white man. Read that. Bring it out. Malachi chapter one, verse four. Three. Whereas Edom saith, we are So the nation of Esau, Edom saith, read. We are impoverished, mm -hmm. but we will return and build the red desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. That's what most of God said. They're going to build, but I'm going to throw down. What they're talking about in history was the Renaissance era. Because we used to rule. What they call the Dark Ages. We was in rulership. They started to take over. And they repainted everything. They repainted Christ white. And he's black according to the Bible. They started to put their image on things. Right. They called it rebirth, the Renaissance. Because they started to rise up again. But most of God said, yeah, they're going to rise up. But he's going to throw down. You understand that, bro? Keep going. Keep going. They shall build, but I will throw down. Uh -huh. And they shall be called the boulder of wickedness. What did God call them? The boulder of wickedness. Most High God calls them the border of wickedness. Right. Matter of fact, jump up to verse 3. Let's see how God... Okay, go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Bring it out. Well, you got indignation forever. That means what? Most high God hates them forever. Indignation means you don't like a strong dislike. Right. He said, I dislike them forever. Forever. That's right. When you go to Romans 9 and 13, he says, Esau have I hated. Right. Jump up. Yeah. Show the bro. Verse 3. Go ahead. And verse 2. I have loved ye, saith the Lord. Yet you say, where hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. And I hated Esau. Did you know what's heavy about all of that? Did he not kill the children of Egypt, their firstborn, to deliver, deliver the children of Israel? So he killed people's babies. That's how much he loves you. He put them to death so you can be free. Right. He just said he hates Edom. But our people like to what? Oh, nah, nah, nah. I don't want to read that part. Yeah, let's skip that part. Let's read John 3.16. I, I read everything. And that's what we got to do, bro. You got you to read everything. Of course. Because our people like to believe that it's God fighting with the devil. That means that you don't believe in God. You think God is equal to the devil? No. Believe it or not, God controls the devil. He brings the necessary evil to wake you up. He, it says the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. He brought us into this condition because we didn't listen to him. You understand that? So he brought a necessary evil to bring good. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 4. Look it out. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give man for thee, and people for thy life. Look it Most out. God said, I'm going to give people for your lives. Right. Did that not happen to the children of, uh, with the, with the uh, firstborn in Egypt? He gave their lives for you. He put babies to death for his people. Right. He's coming back for his 
people. Right. Over and over, bro, when you read the scriptures, he gets possess possessive. Christ came for his people. Right. He came for that which was his loss for the nation of Israel. Right. God said, I'm in the midst of Israel and none else. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.